let's get to permissions. All right, Amazon puts this front and center now, this uh, block public access bucket settings. I'm gonna walk through these because this illustrates some of the uh, things I'm gonna be showing you later. Um, if you truly want a private bucket, this is what you check. You check, give me all of these, but let's walk through them one at a time. So the first one, Block, uh, uh, block public access to buckets and objects granted through new ACLs. Okay, so what that's saying is, if you have uh, 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 existing ACLs and you apply this, it's gonna leave those alone and it's only gonna block ACLs that are new that open up uh, public access. Well, why would you want that? You might want that if you have a bucket, for example, with a, a mix of objects, some of which you actually need public access to, I would argue if you're doing that, it's probably time to look at going to different buckets for public and non-public objects because it just gets really hard to manage. But that's why you might, you might select only on new ones. It's not gonna protect you from past mistakes, but it'll prevent future mistakes with ACLs. The next one, uh, through any ACL. So it's gonna go back in time and block anything that was open public before. And then the same thing for uh, bucket policies, the same two categories for bucket policies. So there's a reason that there are these four. We talked earlier about the layers. These are referencing different layers in, uh, in the security stack for S3. Um, by default, I would start with all of these on anytime you can. And I would also say, uh, just to repeat myself, if you have a need for any publicly accessible S3 objects, I would isolate those in their own bucket rather than having a mixture within a bucket. 